and we'll fly your boy Davidoff and welcome back to Movie Monday. This is the penultimate episode for X-Men, uh, X-Men Movie Marathon. This is a build up to Dark Phoenix. Episode 4 is not needed because it's uh, Logan. So I don't really need to do that but I want to do it because it's a great movie. So I'm, that'll be probably be next week, probably. And after that probably be Infinity War. No, Endgame stuff, it'll probably be like Endgame theories maybe. I don't know, I'll do something on Endgame. I'll do some things on Marvel, on MCU stuff. Um, but yeah, this is a build up to Dark Phoenix, obviously, and this is the, this for me is the most relevant. This is the most relevant. Uh, these are the most relevant movies that we need to watch for Dark Phoenix. Obviously, the beginnings trilogy, as it said, as it says over here. There we go. I call it the prequel trilogy, but it's it's the beginnings. It all came like I got it on Black Friday. I got a uh, a massive box set. You get three covers. Uh, one in one of them you get the original trilogy. The other one you get. The first two Wolverine movies, and the third one you get this. You get First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse Times 2. You get a 3D version as well, and I don't have 3D TV anyway, but I think it's pretty cool. All on Blu-ray. I got it really cheap as well. It was like really, really cheap. So it was really, it was a proper bargain, proper bargain. Anyway, yeah, uh, let's talk about those movies. Um, for me, the Beginnings trilogy, the original, not the original, sorry, the prequel trilogy with the younger versions, for me, is a far better trilogy than the original trilogy. I just think it's, I just think it's amazing. Like apart from Apocalypse, Apocalypse is not good. It's uh, it's disappointing, underwhelming. Um, but if you put it side by side, the trilogies as a whole, the prequels are better. First Class for me is much better than the original X Men movie. The original one is not bad. It's pretty good actually. Even X2 is pretty good as well. But I was not a big fan. I was not a huge fan. I liked Wolverine. I liked Storm. I liked some of the characters. I, I liked some of the characters. Um, but I wasn't a huge fan of those movies. Sorry, I was. I'm not sure. I wasn't a. <laughs> that put me off guard. Uh, that scared me as well. It's like 3 a.m. right now. I wasn't a huge fan of that movie. Um, of those movies, those first two movies, uh, it, but I, I watched them and I liked them because I cared about the characters, but again, wasn't a huge fan. The first class for me was great. It was amazing. Days of Future Past, even better. For me, this was the best X-Men team-up movie by far for me. In fact, the only movie in that universe that I feel was better is Logan. Like I would say, this is better than every other X-Men movie apart from Logan. I'd say it's even better, better than Deadpool as well, one and two. Days of Future, Days of Future Past, I think, is, is that good. I think it's flipping amazing. I, I, it was just amazing and an honour. It felt like an honour to watch it again, honestly. Days of Future Past is just... That's how you do a team-up movie. It was just so damn good. And it was really deep as well. Like, seeing, seeing some people die was uh, very sad to see. It was very dark and depressing. But it was great, you know, that, that was bloody great. So much better than X2, and finally Apocalypse. I don't think it was good, um, but it was still better than Last Stand. Last Stand was just... The only one that was worse than Last Stand was Origins. And then again, those are the only two movies that are worse than Apocalypse. But I feel like if I was to rank things, I was like, I would put Logan first, Days of Future Past, Probably Deadpool. Deadpool's not part of, Mar part of Marathon, by the way, but it's in that universe. Then maybe Deadpool, then... Um, then I guess Deadpool 2, I guess. Um, First Class would be in there as well, in that area, with Deadpool and Deadpool 2. Um, what am I missing? Then I guess would be uh, X2, then the Wolverine, then the original X-Men. Something in that, those three in some order. And then, then there'd be a big gap, then Apocalypse, then another big gap, then Last Dan and Origins. That's, that's how I'd probably rank it, to be honest. Yeah, that's how I'd probably rank it. Logan at the top, Days of Future Past right, right behind. First Class Deadpool movies. Yeah, I, I mentioned it already, but... Yeah, Apocalypse was not very good. Um, partly because it was underwhelming, you know, just genuinely just... There was so much good build-up to it, in my opinion. 
I mean, they didn't build up to Apocalypse, but I mean, like, First Class was great for me. There's a Future Pass was amazing for me. And after those two great movies, how did they mess up so badly with Apocalypse? It just... It's just annoying, you know? Apocalypse is a proper villain. He's powerful. And he should have been like Thanos or Darkseid or Galactus. Proper Galactus, by the way. Not the one from Rise of Silver Surfer. That was just a load, a load of rubbish as well. But Apocalypse should be like one of those villains, like Thanos <laughs> in Infinity War. He should have been that good but he wasn't, he was nowhere near, it just, it just didn't work and the voice was weird as well, I don't know if that was comic book stuff, I have no idea and another thing that really pissed me off was um, Quicksilver, right? Uh, no, not Quicksilver himself, but the fact that Quicksilver did not tell Magneto that he's his son, that, that annoyed me I'm like, Magneto's your dad mate, just tell him like, if this doesn't happen in Dark Phoenix, I'll be annoyed. Like, even if it's a great movie. Like, I'll, I'll think of, if it's a great movie, I'll love it, of course. But if, if they close it out and Eric still doesn't know that Quicksilver is his son, I'll be disappointed. Like, they're ending it there, right? Just go all out, put everything in there. Just give us that scene, that moment. I just, I just want to see his reaction. I just want to see what... What happens when uh, when he tells him? He better. Be, I assume P Peter is in um, um, Dark Phoenix, right? I would assume so. Anyway, um, I'm kind of hoping that they carry him over though, because Quicksilver had some of the best scenes in this trilogy. To be fair, there's a future past. You know what I'm talking about? That time stopping scene in the kitchen. That was awesome, and obviously in Apocalypse as well when he was um, saving this saving people from from the house blowing up as well. And to be fair, that's why Apocalypse wasn't that bad, it wasn't as bad as Last Stand, because it had Quicksilver in it, who was cool, and it had Magneto, who was also like, Magneto was one of the best parts of the movie for me. Like, for me, if you remember the end of, if you remember Apocalypse at the end, um, where Apocalypse is about to win, really, he's found Charles, he's about to destroy everyone, and then Magneto saves them, and he throws the metal bars at him, drawing the X sign. For me, when Magneto saves them, that is, that is one of the most epic scenes actually, even though it's a disappointing movie, I thought that was cool. Like, I do, I do like that, when um, they look like they're losing, then someone just comes in and saves the day, someone you don't expect. And uh, Magneto just pulled it off so well. And if it wasn't for Magneto and uh, Quicksilver, it would have been completely terrible. So, um, they saved parts of the movie for me. They saved part also, Wolverine's cameo in Apocalypse. Yeah, that as well. That that was pretty cool. Well, that, does it really matter now? To be fair, because they reset the timelines. There's so many different timelines now. To be fair, it could be one timeline when you think about it. Because um, these movies happening now could be like what happens before. Because in Days of Future Past, when it's all fixed, Logan goes back, goes back to the present, and um, he goes and talks to Charles about 1973. Where they last left off and Charles was like you're back so wasn't that the timeline from the prequels I can no I think this confuses everyone to be honest how many timelines are there it, it, it seems like there's a lot but it seems like you could fit it into one but we'll see then again Gene Scott everyone's alive when uh, Logan um, when Days of Future Past at the end everyone's alive and then in Logan, they're all dead. They reference it. Like, this Logan happens after Days of Future Past, I'm pretty sure, is in that timeline. And obviously, that's very tragic the way it ended. And I'm pretty sure all the X-Men died in that one. They didn't show it, but I'm pretty sure they did. From Charles. Um, that's going to be depressing to uh, watch next week, I've got to say, but I'm definitely going to watch it. But, um... Yeah, the timeline just... Let's just forget about the timelines, okay? It's, it's messed up, but they still make some good stuff, which is good. Um, also, in, in First Class... I'm talking about this the wrong way, by the way. I should have talked about it in, in order, but... In First Class, Magneto's origin... Um, they did it again, uh, like in the original uh, trilogy, in the first movie. And they did, they did it better this time, I think. Um, one of the reasons I prefer the original... Not the original, sorry. I keep saying original because it's before... One of the reasons I prefer the beginnings trilogy is uh, I like the younger versions. Like, I prefer Michael Fassbender's Magneto to Ian McKellen. 
Ian McKellen is good, but I prefer Michael Fassbender. And I prefer James McAvoy as Charles Xavier as well. It's not all the same though, like Storm I prefer Halle Berry, definitely by far. With Jean it's hard to tell. Um, wasn't a big fan of Jean in the original trilogy, but I'd still like understood her powers. I I liked her. Um, but after after the last stand it kind of ruined it for me. And and with Sophie Turner, she hasn't really like she hasn't done much yet. I mean she's beaten Apocalypse. To get that spoiler alert, there's a spoiler video obviously. Um but uh, yeah, she's beaten Apocalypse, but apart from that, she's only been in Apocalypse. That's the only movie she's been in, so you can't really judge her until Dark Phoenix comes out. So, yeah, hopefully, like, if they do that story right, then I guess she'd be better than, uh, I forgot, I've forgotten the actress's name for the original. Um, Mystique, I prefer the older one. Um, it's mainly because they made Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique annoying. They made it, and they made her annoying because she was, she was such, uh, a prominent actor, actress back then. She was so popular because um, of the Hunger Games and other things as well. She, she was famous. She was at the top of a game at the time. And I think because of that, um, they centered they centered the movies around her in a way, you know, especially in Apocalypse as well, where she's the leader of the X Men now. It's just they put her as like the face of the X Men, like it just it didn't work. It just didn't work. And I think they did it just because she's Jennifer Lawrence. And to be fair, they did it with Wolverine as well. That like they pushed Wolverine in front of us. Um, they really centered a lot of storylines around Wolverine. But Wolverine, the thing is, we all like Wolverine. With 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 Mystique, it was different. You know, it was very different. To center it around her was just a really weird decision. You know, um, and yeah, based on the trailers for Dark Phoenix, they it looks like she might actually die pretty early in the movie, unless the trailers have tricked us. But if the trailers add up the way I think they add up, then I think they showed her death in the trailers. Watch trailer two again, I think you know I think you'll understand what I mean. But um Yeah, yeah, they centered it too much around Mystique. That's that's one of the problems, especially in Apocalypse as well. Um with Storm, with Storm I prefer I, I, I actually I said that already don't I? I? Said that already. With Beast. With Beast um it's fifty fifty, I don't know who I prefer, original or prequel. Um, Scots, I prefer the original Scott actually. So it's mainly Charles and <laughs> Charles and Magneto. It's it's mainly Charles and Eric that I prefer the versions of. But I still prefer in general the younger X Men. I just think their movies are better, and I think it's cooler. And Days of Future Past just, just did it for me because they combined the two. They combined the um, older X Men and the younger X Men. And I think that was pretty cool. And I and I like how it was Charles talking to his older self at one point. I think that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, um, also another thing, Wolverine's cameo in First Class, that was pretty funny. It was like five seconds, but apparently that was not meant to be the final cut, apparently. If you know what I'm talking about, right, Wolverine's in a bar, Magneto and Charles are coming to, um, coming in to uh, recruit him. He's like, go away, in a more rude way, you know what I mean? I try not to swear because YouTube Centers out swearing nowadays, but um, yeah, and he tells them to do one and they go off and he turns around and apparently they actually went off to refilm the scene and he was turning around. I don't know if that's 100% true, but apparently it's, it's rumored to be true. Apparently that wasn't the final and that wasn't uh, they, they went to reshoot that again, apparently, but I think that's still pretty, it was still pretty funny. Um, in Days of Future Past, I saw something interesting actually. Recently, you might see me review The Gifted. The Gifted is a mutant show related to the X-Men. The X-Men themselves are not in this are not in this TV show, but it's related to it. It takes place in the future. The X-Men don't exist anymore because of something that happened, um, and it and it focuses on some mutant groups. And in the main mutant group, the the heroes of that show, um, there's two characters called Blink and Thunderbird. Blink can go through portals. And Thunderbird has endurance, he can like, he has super speed and strength. Um, and when I saw them in Days of Future Past, I was like, wait a second, those were the ones from The Gifted. Like, the guy had the same hair and everything, the girl was, had, she was going through purple portals, and I was like, that was in The Gifted. Like, are they, are they the same characters? So I was looking up, as, as I was watching, I was looking it up on IMDb. Um, and yeah, it was Blink. It was Blink who was in. It was different actors, though. It was. It wasn't the same actors, 
but it, it was different but I knew it was the same character as soon as I saw, the, saw their powers I was like oh yeah they're in the gifted so I looked it up and yeah it was Blink but the one of Days of Future Past is the brother to the one in the gifted if you haven't seen both you're probably confused right now so <laughs> I probably should just move on from this but still almost the same the same character the girl's the same character and the boy is the brother of the character on the TV show, The Gifted. I just think that's pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure the TV show is not connected. I'm pretty sure it's in its own timeline, but I still think that's pretty cool. I still think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, talk about Quicksilver scenes, Magneto. And uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's about it really. I, I, thought, I think I covered everything. Everything that I wanted to say anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, this, this this is overall the overall is there's a really good trilogy and um, I think part of the reason they're doing Dark Phoenix is it's not just to like close it out, but also I think they're trying to give us something that they wanted to give us for Apocalypse. I think like Apocalypse was, was supposed to be like the the big one, the great one to cap it all off, but I think because it failed, I think that's why they're doing Dark Phoenix. Maybe maybe not. Maybe they want to do it anyway, but. Um, I really hope they close out really well. Um, even though it's going to the MCU now, I think Fox Marvel have done pretty well with the X-Men. Not Fantastic Four, but with the X-Men, I think they've done pretty well. So I think uh, they can be proud of that, especially Logan, Deadpool, they brought us all of that. Um, I would love Quicksilver to stay in the MCU, like this version of him from the X-Men movies. That, that Peter guy, the, the actor who plays him. I would love the MCU to hire him, but I don't think they will. I think the only one that'll carry over is Ryan Reynolds. Sorry, I lost my voice there. Completely lost it. Started having a coughing fit for some reason. I've been talking too much today. I think that's what it is, been recording too much. Anyway, uh, yeah, as, as I was saying, um, what was I saying? Yeah, from the X-Men in the Fox uni universe, I think the only one they're carrying over is Ryan Reynolds. I mean, he's already on Disney's, um, Disney's page. On the, 20, on the 20th of March, the deal was done. Disney got Fox and um, straight away on Disney's website they put multiple things there and they put MCU stuff, Star Wars stuff, they put like main pictures, Pixar, Disney, whatever. And on there they had Deadpool. Like he he was literally on like the banner on the front page. I was just like, okay. Well that's interesting, especially considering it's Disney as well. Like they're putting a guy who slices people up with swords, you know? I guess he's gonna be like a big part of something, maybe. Because if they put him on like, on front page, it's got to be something in there, you know. So I mean, definitely. I mean, they were never gonna like get rid of Ryan Reynolds. Obviously, they were always gonna get him in. Um, so I think he's the only one, and for him it works because he's got the fourth wall stuff and stuff. But for everyone else, I don't think they're recasting him. I think they're recasting everyone else apart from Deadpool. But I would, if if I could choose, I'd prefer that version of Quicksilver to come along. To be fair, I, would, I wouldn't I would mind Michael Fassbender. I wouldn't mind him. You see, because Wanda, Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, is one of the Avengers. And assuming she comes back in Endgame, her father is Magneto. Her father is Magneto. And... I know she's been through a lot in the MCU, but I would love to see her meet her father. I would love to see her. And they're doing a Disney TV show for her. I hope she meets her father in that series. Or in a movie. I just, I just hope she does. Maybe it happens in... Because uh, there's rumours about Avengers vs X-Men. That'd be a movie that they build up to next. That might be in the next big thing. Not really 100% sure on that, but... Um, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? If they did that. And if they did that, they could like... Introduce a story arc, Magneto. I don't know. I just, I just want Wanda to meet her father. I, I, I just want it. I just want to see what could happen with her. This is your boy Davidoff. Please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. And one more thing. In first class, Magneto's theme song, damn good. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, if you remember, you remember. But Magneto's uh, theme song in first class. Look it up, it's, 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 I like it, I like it. Anyway, yeah, see ya.